Hi everyone, today we're commenting on using the Mesclatoris solventless without a sip to wash fresh frozen flour. If you're curious about the process, keep watching. We recently did a demo and were fortunate enough to be allowed to film the process. If you haven't seen the previous video, I suggest you check it out. This was a demo, so the lab was not fully equipped. Most of the staff involved had never used a Mesclatoris system, we made a lot of mistakes in this demo, so I want to highlight what we did wrong, why, and how to avoid these problems. Okay, let's get to it. First of all, cleanliness is key to make great hash. Focus on dialing down your procedures to keep your workspace and your equipment clean. Have and actually use PPE. Based on the quality of flour we were washing in this video, this tank had too much water, too much ice, was not prepped properly, was agitated too fast, and resulted in high shear. The viscosity of the water changes over time, more so with high shear, and at a certain point, it becomes necessary to change water due to changes in fluid dynamics. If this was hemp, or if the aim was to achieve food grade product, this would be a fine SOP. One thing that did work well was the SE filtration tricone pump. Notice a smooth flow of the pump without typical fluctuations generated by an AODD pump. This is due to the pulsation dampener we used. The flow here is the minimum possible and can be increased to about 44 gallons a minute. With most systems, including the mesclatore, when making good hash, frequent water changes are required. Water is changed in part because contaminants quickly build up and make filtering out hash challenging. By changing water, we discard contaminants, making the filtration in bags much easier. When you're washing 45 pounds at a time, the contaminants issue is exacerbated. Using a sieve changes the dynamics of this process and allows the reuse of water. It makes the process faster and the workload far less. A lot can be said about rinsing your hash, so we'll make a separate video on how we recommend rinsing hash once collected. This is the first of two collections. We washed for an hour, made one water change, and washed for another 15 minutes and collected a second time. As you can see, there's difficulty rinsing because the brood is full of water. The brood actually has a drain, but is not draining because a 25 micron bag is clogged. This is mostly due to the large number of contaminants from the process, a result of all of the issues uh, stated earlier. Despite all the setbacks and mistakes, the hash looks pretty clean. However, this can easily be improved significantly by modifying your SOP. Remember, great equipment helps to make great hash, but equipment isn't everything. Procedure and quality flour is just as important. Changing water is necessary when using bags, and it's evident when pulling the 25 micron bag. If water is not changed, the viscosity decreases significantly and the percentage of solids increases. It's very different to hand wash a few pounds and filter, then wash 45 pounds at a time. The amount of hash collected quickly overwhelms any bag. This is not the case when using sieves. At this point, one effective way to deal with clogged bags is to spray water to dislodge particulate from the bag and clean particulate from the hash. Adding water sounds counterintuitive, but that actually helps.
Avoid this type of swirling as one day someone will inevitably spill hash on the floor. Instead, focus on adding clean water to rinse your hash. Through frequent water changes, most problems highlighted in this video disappear. A more gentle agitation would produce the same yield results, but better hash. By incorporating a sieve to this process, we can reduce or eliminate water changes and greatly reduce the workload while making cleaner hash.